Hello and welcome to a new day of streaming game progression, game development progression. So I hope you had a nice weekend. I actually had and I was absolutely in the mood to uh, do some things on the weekend uh, related to our game development. And yeah, I would like to show off some, some progress I have made on uh, the weekend, which uh, was actually some art design I have done. So I don't know if you if you know it or not. Uh, the original graphic art was done by my girlfriend for the original game, and I'm not a really good uh, art designer in general. So um, I was learning a little bit <clears throat> this weekend and uh, prepared some uh, graphics. I would like to show off today on the stream first of all, just to give you a small sneak peek. So just me, let me just start my Inkscape and let's change this scene. Hopefully it was right. No, that was the starting scene, sorry. Yeah, so this is our live scene. So uh, what I've done on the weekend was I, we have the right, on the right tile, this is our original one and I've created a simple gra uh, graphic style. I can achieve on myself and I'm pretty happy with the outcome. It is yeah, much more, I would say childish or just uh, simpler than the original one. And also it's of course a work in progress. But um, the good thing is I was able to create something and uh, it actually made fun. And I think that is uh, very important and it was very important and it showed me that I could be able to create something new because why we need it. Um, the problem is um, on the original tiles we have, we don't have all the animations we would need for the new version or for the improved version. And it will be very, very difficult to extend our existing animations with the old graphic style because most of it is hand drawn and uh, it's done in, in Photoshop. And I don't know if we actually have all the uh, source files available to create new animations, to make the graphics look better and stuff like that. So I came up with the thoughts that I need to create graphics by myself or better said, I, we need a way to create new graphics for the new project. And that's why I uh, invested some time into the uh, Inkscape learning and uh, yeah, that's the outcome from I would say five to six hours I've invested and um, I'm pretty happy so far or at least I can say I have an art style created where I can actually do some prototyping with if it's actually going for the final version or whatever we will see. I have no idea um, if it's good enough, if the quality will be uh, fine in, in Godot later on. We will see, but I'm pretty happy with the outcome for this tile. Um, I created the tile, I created this tree and uh, some grass. And I also would like to show you some, some very, very uh, early character designs. So here, as I've tried to create a, a badger for our game um, in this style, I'm also, I'm, I'm not so happy with it. But uh, yeah, it's something I can work off with. And as I said, I had uh, really, really much fun with it by creating it. And I hope we can create some prototype graphics where we actually can start off with and uh, making the game working actually, because it's just the, yeah, it's, it's graphics are the expression of the game actually. And we need to, to show off something and we need to animate something. And uh, yeah, I discovered a whole lot of new fields we actually need to get into to get the project up and running. We need the decoding where I'm, at least I would say I'm the most comfortable with, with the Godot coding, but we also need the graphic art. We need the designs. We need the animations. We need the uh, VFX, the special effects. We need some shaders. Uh, we need a lot of stuff to actually make the game look better and uh, yeah, bring up more action into it. And there will be a lot of fields involved also as sounds and music where I have to learn a lot. And uh, yeah, I, my, my goal or my vision is to do this all by myself most likely. Maybe not the music, 
maybe there we can uh, take some some hire some freelancer work for composing or something like that but in first place i would try to make the most of it by myself and uh, look how everything is working together so yeah that's actually uh, what's the results of the weekend and as you can see i'm uh, <laughs> super in the mood of game development i'm back into game development so i invested some time on the weekend for game development it's a huge step for me um, because the, the this motivation and inspiration was gone so far so long so far and i'm so happy that it's uh, coming back to me and i'm now back into game development and having so much fun with it so let us uh, go on and don't waste time we want to progress further to the project i will just close them here sorry that was not what i want to do this uh let me just say the setup for the stream was done. This card is ready. Uh, this is everything else. So let us go to the day for today. What I would like to do, I came up with the idea yesterday before I went to sleep. I would to do, the first thing I would like to do on this Monday, on a new week is, I would like to have a retrospective with you. So by that, I mean, I would like to uh, go over the last week and look what was actually working. What's up? I wanted to create a new rainware and select these select projects above. Oh, I can't do that. Okay. Okay, I think I can only have two projects. Okay, it's no problem. Then I will create a new deck, which is called organization or organizational stuff, I would call it. And uh, let us take some planning icon for it. So, and there I would like to create a new card, which is called retrospectives. And what I would like to do with you or in general is, I would like to have a short retrospective on each Monday morning to recap the last week and improve the quality in general and having or creating and creating some action points to work on. So this is the idea behind the retrospective. It's a doc type card. Let's mark it to a doc type card and we would like to save it to a deck. It should be also view a hero card and I would like to have the week one. I'm sorry, it was wrong. I'm not too familiar with it. I would like to add, create. So now we have the card, which is the retrospective week one. And what I would like to do with you now is just to have a short re retrospective. So the first question is what went well last week? What went bad last week? And what can we improve or should we keep what what can we what can we approve or improve keep so i would say these are the questions and what i would like to do now is i just mark them as uh, let me just mark them as some highlights and then i would set myself a small time frame um yeah I just take two minutes and i just make myself some uh, some sorts about these questions so the first question let's just get right into it right into the start of week one so what went well last week i absolutely liked uh, absolutely absolutely liked this twitch schedule it worked quite well also i like the progress we made in the game um i like the 
the yeah how to say it i what i really enjoyed was the uh, interaction interaction with stream and growing um, I will just write down first in this two minutes what I say and then we go point for point and I will uh, explain a little bit what I mean. But let me just uh, take my thoughts and write them down. <clears throat> uh, learning a lot with go. Inkscape, etc. Um, what else did we do last week? We had all that camera stuff we had all the tile map stuff um i think the twitch stuff was good i think the improvement of uh, stream quality uh, schedule was quite nice and the last thing i would say I guess we had a cool plan. We sticked to a good plan for first steps. So I would say these are my points. I would uh, say for what went well last, last week. So let me just go into detail. Absolutely like the Twitch schedule. What I really liked is the idea about having this two hour stream every day so that keep, kept me on going and uh, we have made it every day two hours a day and it worked quite well and we were here and we had done some progress and that was as i expected it i would like to have the schedule to just work on it and we always had this two hours uh, beside of thursday i think where i have to fetch my daughter from the kindergarten it was five day uh, five minutes earlier but in general the twitch schedule was awesome and it worked good and we had made 10 hours game development last week. Um, I also like the progress we made in the game so far. We, as I said, we had the tile map drawn. We had the camera position. We had the zooming. We had the panning. Everything was working by end of the week. And we were able to draw out of our JSON data from the old game. <clears throat> we were able to draw the map. We added a camera. We had the camera. We are able to zoom in on the camera um one moment i will reduce the light a little bit i hope that makes the camera a little bit better yeah so um and also doesn't blind me um <clears throat> so we made good progress uh with the with the drawing with the time app and uh, we were able to draw it and uh, just make the basic camera movement and that worked quite well and uh also i think the speed or yeah called speed the implementation speed was nice so um i wasn't sure if we get so far in the first week with just 10 hours and a lot of streaming and uh, organizational staff and planning staff ongoing but it was cool uh, we we had the progress we were fastly with the implementation and i think there were just some smaller barriers where we just uh, stocked or stacked up in <laughs> stocked in the progress but we overcome it and yeah we had a, we had quite a good progress the interaction with the stream is of course always a little bit uh, yeah it's a little bit hard for me because we are what i have now um we have seven followers on the stream and most likely the most views come over youtube so most of the viewers aren't on live stream because the 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 time is also, I think, with 10 to 12 p.m. It's a little bit problematic because most of you guys are working. And so the stream is, of course, very small. But yeah, it was first week. We had a brand new stream channel. It's a brand new Twitch stream channel for me. Um, but I also liked already the growing because I have just made some announcements on my website on uh, discords and we have already seven followers and we have already some live viewers had in the last week we had also some chatting already ongoing um yeah i'm totally happy with that the stream is a side project um i want to make this game and i would like to become a little bit more comfortable to presenting myself and presenting the game stuff in general of course there is also the goal of building 
some kind of community with you guys and having some early feedback that's all cool but it's not needed so i will progress on this uh, even if nobody is watching because afterwards i'm uploading the videos to youtube and uh, at least there we have views we have viewer we have some feedbacks and it just also makes just fun to do it with you guys and as i said the stream is the first goal of the stream is just to make me working on my game in a schedule on a yeah on a on a time uh, limit we are doing here and this is working fine so let us go to the next point um i also liked a lot the learning of godot of course we uh, just uh, work with godot 4 before i worked with godot 3 so i'm not a completely newbie of course but there was a lot of things to learn also with the tile map and with the drawing itself um, I think we made a good progress there. I also, uh, as I said, was in a mood to do some Inkscape on the weekend. And I also <coughs> have done some really good progress there and was learning a lot there. And uh, I liked it a lot. We improved the quality of the, screen, the stream and the schedule in general. So uh, I think I'm a little bit more comfortable in the meantime by day six. Uh, with starting up the stream, with posting up the announcement in the different Discord channels. I created some hero cards right here to uh, having every, every step I'm doing every day again uh, somehow written down. And I think that's also a good improvement. And the last thing I've written down here is stick to a good plan for the first step. Yeah, I think also that worked quite well. I tried to stick to the tile map and we would like to yeah work with the tile map. And uh, also a dog card and uh that worked out so we we started with the time map and at the end of the week we had a time map which is drawn and we had a camera which is actually working so let us go on to the next question the next question is what went bad last week or what could be better i would say so first of all is uh, stuck on development uh, we had some problem with, with the camera panning, zooming. Um, I dislike a little bit the schedule with my freelance work. That's actually a problem. Um, I'm a little bit too motivated <laughs> at the moment for the short amount of time. I would say that's also not... It's okay, it's, it's, it has a good side and a bad side, but uh, for now I would just write it down for the bad side because I don't like it in this way. And yeah, maybe sometimes I have some problems to show off what I'm doing or missing the tools. So I think these are my four points for the last week, which are actually not that good. So first of all, we oftentimes uh, stuck on the on the development in the stream. If this when this happens, it it feels a little bit painful for me because I need to do some researching then live on the stream, and I can't explain to you guys how we can go on, how we can proceed. And uh, this actually just makes me feel a little bit bad. I think it's quite normal as developer um, because we always get some barriers where we have to overcome them. And that's actually what our work as developer is made of or made for. So yeah, the schedule and freelance work is also a problem. I think there are two problems involved with that. The first thing is, as I already said, for the, the time from 10 to 12 p.m. is a little bit problematic for live viewers because most of you guys are working as well and nobody has the time uh, to watch the stream actually live. So maybe a schedule later in the evening or in the afternoon would be better to attract more viewers on, on Twitch. But I have a problem to have the schedule there because I have also to do some stuff like grocery buying uh, playing with my daughter etc and uh, i have no idea for now how i could or should 
move the schedule to a better place where I have a, a two hour block of time, um, which actually is in, in no, yeah, no contrast to other things I have to do. So for now, for at least this, this week, we will stick to the 10 to 12 p.m. schedule and I will need to make me make some thoughts about that or we need to discuss if there are some better times I can do. Um, the freelance work, well, it's just uh, fetched it together in two points. Uh, the problem is on my on my daytime work, on my daily work, uh, where I actually earn my money with, and which is quite important for me because we need the money, um, is a little bit problematic at the moment. We have there are some releases and it's a lot of stress and I need to be there. Um, so... We actually have our daily meeting there at 9.15 and uh, half an hour later I start with the stream and if I need to fix anything on this project I don't have the time for it and I'm not available in the meantime where most time of my freelance work is done actually so it's it's a bit overlapping with the with the freelance work at the moment with the schedule and it's uh, yeah I don't like it and may, as I said maybe I need to change it or to see if I can change it at all. So the third point, I'm a little bit too motivated at the moment for the short amount of time. That bothers me in, in, in a bad way because in the two hours we are streaming here, I don't get everything done which I would like to do with you guys. So for, the, for example, at the moment we are just talking about the good things and the bad things last week. But it's quite necessary, of course, because you need to have a plan and we need to stick to a plan and we need to do some project planning in general. So as you can see, the project needs to be managed in some way. And as we are the same guy as I'm the developer, the project owner, uh, the producer, etc. So I need to fit all the tasks and I need to spare my time and uh, get it, everything into this two hour schedule. So I just have to go for a short break. I'm back in a minute. I'm sorry. So I'm back, sorry for that, for this short interruption. Um, where was I? Where was I? So we were in the, what went bad last week. So I'm a little bit motivated at the moment to do more game development actually uh, than this two hours a day. And uh, the problem is with that, I don't want to do anything in my free time because then you can't watch uh, the progress and then the next day we would have done a lot of progress and you don't know <laughs> where it came from because my goal was to just show all the stuff I'm doing in these two hours and not working around the stream or 
preparing stuff and getting stuff done outside of the stream because I want to make it for you to comprehend and to to see actually what everything is involved. And if I now would do the project planning in my free time, you would miss all this thoughts which uh, going into this process. <clears throat> And I think it's quite important to just have them also on stream because it's a part of the game development. And as I said, the problem for now is uh, I fitting too much disciplines. I fitting too much roles because we are the project manager, the producer, the animator, the graphic artist, the developer. And of course, my heart, my heart is at development at game development. And I would like to show off two hours of non just straight game development. So that's a problem. We need to see how we can go around that. And as long as I'm not, yeah, get paid for the stuff here, I can't invest too much more time into it because I, as I said, I have my job and I need to do it. And that's where I get paid from. And that's why I have to stick to the two hour time block for now. Um, it can be changed in the future, but that's actually what me bothers from last week. And the last point, sometimes have the problems to show off what I mean and have not the uh, right tools for it. So what I mean by that is I often have things in mind or would like to present it better to you on stream, but I think it's sometimes very hard to comprehend what I would like to show you or what I mean by special things. And also... <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I would like to have just a whiteboard where I can write things down and just visualize them for you so you can comprehend what I mean or what I say. But that's some kind of presenting. And I would add a last point, which is actually <coughs> felt sometimes a little bit unstructured. Structured. Oh, I'll just write it in that way. Um, yeah, that was... Also, when I'm starting off the stream, oftentimes I don't know what's the what's the daily point of it. I have just a small agenda for today, what I would like to do, but there's actually not a real plan. There is not too much milestones uh, for now, and I think we should stick more to a plan. So let us go to the third point, actually, what we would like to improve or what I would like to improve or would like to keep. And there I would say we actually need to do more we need to do more project planning. We need to do more project planning. Yeah, I would uh, like to start off the day with project planning. Start off the day with it. So this would help us to be more structured and uh, would like to give us the view what the next things we need to do and uh, yeah we can then stick to a plan and go on from there also i would like to create weekly milestones yeah i think also that is quite uh, important um, because also the milestones will give us also some more insights what we were about to achieve what we are need to do for this week um, another question is what we would like to do with the different fields of interest like animations game art and game development um, we would like to do everything i'm not sure if i would like to stream everything or just do some discipline outside of the stream and just have the game development itself on the stream we need to think about it. So discuss about showing off different disciplines at stream. So it would be nice to have some feedback from you guys also here on this topic. Yeah, but I would like to say this is actually what we should improve. So let us do a new deck for it and uh, I will add a new deck, which is actually, no, a new card, which is actually discussion points. And there I would like to have a short list of schedule time. 
uh, we need to post that uh, different <coughs> disciplines on stream like game art coding etc so the question is if we have some we can uh, define some days actually we could say on thursday it's art day on uh, friday we have animation day or something like that or we just do everything which is needed i have no idea how we could do this in future but uh, we will see i would like to have that at least considered and yeah we need to discuss the this time for it as said but i'm not sure if that's too much important so let us just say this is there so then milestones yeah there's also the discussion how to handle how to handle milestones in future so these are my points for today or for this week from last week we need to think about how we can achieve that and do that for today i would like to go now back to the work and uh, leave the organizational stuff uh, a little bit behind us now um, i would like to add some different categories we have the coding for the coding we have the art for the for the art design we have the music and sound for now we need some kind of animations which is cool with it's also an animated uh, art field and then we need some cool stuff of uh, what can we do for this what can we do for this this is coding this is this this is visual. we take the same for the visual things and there i would say we need the deck for vfx which is actually involving all the special effects um let us take another this is just uh, confusing i take this one so understood so let us go into our game design document we have the project overview let us make it a little bit bigger we have wood redefined we also need yeah a good a good point good point of game design as i progressed on the weekend through the different graphic arts and style and animation and stuff like that i uh, came up with the with the big thoughts on how we actually progress on this project because i think the redefinition of timber tales is already a little bit wrong because i don't would like to stick too much on the original version and would actually like to come up with a newer version which is redefined by the by the graphics and the art style itself and also i would like to add more components to the gameplay and it, i think it will actually change the game so much that we are, that this will not have too much to do with the original version so we need to make some sorts also in there how we can progress on i would like to write something down on that part so let us first go to the tile map in the original we used generated map based on json data which produced from the map editor tool to actually get the map working goal we need to adjust things problems i don't think the approach adapt to our own implementation we need we don't need the features such as navigation i would like to implement my exit without using tile map yeah that's right that we did last week um, i want to add now because i uh, came up with the new core solution um, <coughs> when using the new graphic art or style i would like to generate the maps a little bit a little bit more procedural with uh, foliage trees etc uh, to make it work with the old version we need to create a small 
create a, a generator which can handle the old data and create the new map out of it. So this is actually what I would like to add here. Um, <clears throat> That's at least my, my thoughts for the time map. So I would stick to the time map we have right now, but uh, with the new um, tiles and with the new trees, etc., I would like to have a more procedural generated version of it. And I would like to write some, uh, some adapter which can actually take the old maps and create the, the new ones out of it. And uh, that's actually the plan also for the next weeks. <clears throat> But for today, I would like to stick to the original schedule. So let us just check what we have written in uh, day six. So the retrospective we have done. Do project planning the first minutes for a better. Yeah, we already started with that. Um, for today, we had uh, thought about implementation, the placements and the starting of the map objects. So let us uh, start the engine actually, and let us start to get into the Godot engine itself. So um, I was playing around a little bit on the weekend with it. So I need to fix my assets. Because we had the tile grass, this one, and we have the original one, which we now need to change back to the original one. And let us just move the tree and let us fire up the map. And that was, yeah, that's the standing actually we have left on uh, Friday. We were able to scroll. We were able to zoom in. We were able to zoom in and out. So what we need now is, as I said, we need some project planning. We need some, we need some plan. We can stick to it. So how we would like to continue with the map. There are a lot of things we can now continue with. And I'm a little bit unsure where I would like to start. So let us just write down some things. <clears throat> In the coding, we have the tile map. We have the tile map, which has some sub cards. We have create the map node. So we imported this, the map, we created the tile map, we created this one. Clean up, refactor some code. I would like to change this, this map objects placements. So let us save that. Let's create a new card, which is actually the placements, placement zones. Encoding, yes. Right. And this uh, map node, create a map node, is done for now. The placement zones. Uh, we need to fetch the placement zones out of the out of the JSON and uh, highlight them on the map to show off where my units can be placed. This is the placement zones we need to do. But before we actually can start with that, I would like to go on and create another hero card. And this is the tile map data layer. So what we have actually done or did for last week is we just took care of the drawing of the map. But the drawing is just one part of the of the tile map engine because the drawing is just the representation of the map on our canvas and it's just drawing our tiles as you can see. And the tiles are just drawn <laughs> there and they are just displayed. But actually the tiles need to have some 
data layer because the tiles need to store if there are units on it, if they are able to move on them or if we are not able to move on them. So they need to have some behaviors, the different tiles and everything we have done so far is just the, the drawing for it. And what we now need is we need to give each tile a behavior and data layer. By this, I mean to have different attributes, attributes and storages, like who is standing on the tile, which coordinates have a tile. Um, is it movable, etc. So um, we need this layer to actually do the math later because out of this data layer our whole uh, mathematics are created because we later need to uh, calculate which tiles are in range of our unit, where we can attack, etc. So this is what the data layer is for. Um, it's a hero card. Uh, add coordinates. So I will uh, shoot up our other project, our old project, and we will take a look into there. Because of course in the old project we have this done already. So we have the tile, which is the tile. This is the drawing tile. And we have in our project, go away, we have all the data. This is objects, this is model. We have the models. And then we have the game model. And then we have somewhere, I think we have a tile. And then we have a GL tile. So there are two different uh, objects. I think so. UI, this, these are the components. This is the drawing. So we have the GL tile somewhere. This is the tile. On drawing. These are the objects. Data, image data, stuff, map event, effects. Mm, I can't find it. There's the map. There is the grid. Where's the grid? Ah, there's the cell. Okay, so sorry, it wasn't the tile, it was the cell. So, and the cell is representing our data layer. So as you can see in our cell, we have the image ID, we have the accessibility as a Boolean, we have the coordinates, we have a placeable Boolean, we have an active view Boolean, we have a visited Boolean, we have the unit as uh, some child, we have the effects, it's, it's an array list. We have the pixel coordinates. We have a particle system effect there. We have a visual effect time. We have a map object object and we have the tile which is representing the view. So this is a lot. These are a lot of uh, of different things. I'm not sure what we need in Godot, if we need all of them as well. But just as let's now first go to the add coordinates. For coordinates we need to no I would not do that in this way data layer. Let us remove this card. archive it so data layer we just put in the data layer this list <clears throat> for now 
So what we would like to achieve for now is just to having the simple data layer combined with our placement zones. So what I would like to do now is I would like to go into the scripts. I would like to see our tile. And our tile for now is just a representation of the tile. And the only thing we have is the get node tile texture. On the map, we then set the map node tile texture and we just set the texture here with the set texture. What we need to do here is we also need to add all the other things to the, to the data. So what I would like to change What I would like to change is, I would like to change a lot, but let us see. Um, the question is if we actually need some things. So what I'm doing here right now is we fetching the texture by the image ID. And then we get from the JSON image meter the image. And we set the texture there. Mm -hmm. Then we set the texture. The question is if we actually need to, I'm not sure if I, uh, why I'm storing the image ID actually as an integer because I think the image ID isn't isn't really necessary because once we have the uh, the texture we don't need the image id but what we would like to have is so let us do some prototyping or better said let's get into this yeah it's it's always hard to to start even if a new week is uh, just started so <clears throat> we need to get started somewhere what I would like to have is the cell X and the cell Y. So this one is quite, quite easy. On the tile set on itself, we need to store the position of our tiles. Yeah, we need to store the position of our tiles. We get the int for the cell X and we get the int for the cell Y. And at the moment we are not using these variables. As you can see, I just passed them over here, but we are don't using them at the moment. What I would like to do is I would like to set them actually on the tile and we would like to say tile cell X is cell X and tile cell epsilon is cell epsilon. So this is pretty straightforward. So we need in our uh, tile, we need the data layer for it. And we would like to have a cell X, which is actually an int. And we would need our cell Y, which is also an int. And so the tile itself already knows its, uh, its uh, position. Yeah, so now we know the position of the X and the epsilon of the tile. Um, let's go back to the map. So we have the image ID where we actually just fetch the texture for now and the position is set over the position X and the position epsilon and we have the Z index. So what is our tile now capable of? Our tile already knows its position, its Z index, the texture, the cell X and the cell epsilon. So what we would need now um, is we go back into the past JSON. We have the max map position. I don't know. Yeah, I'm using that over there for the camera boundings, of course. Um, and we just parse the map for now. What I would like to add now is I would like to stick here to the point and we go. Sorry, that is wrong stuff here. We go to the breakpoint. 
And we now see in our JSON, we have here the dictionary with the placements. So what I would like to do now is I would say parse placement data. Um, one thing I have in mind right now, which, which distracts me quite a lot, is uh, I would like to, to extract the uh, JSON parse functions out of the map here, because I think it's not the right place to have uh, this data here. But yeah, we will see. So um, placement is a dictionary. So what we are trying to achieve now is um, I would like to parse the uh, placement data. As you can see, the placement data is a dictionary which contains the red and the blue player. Um, at the moment, I'm not sure about the blue player. I uh, don't know what the blue player was in the original version. It seems for me a little bit like it's the different one in six, it's eight and four, it's nine and three, nine and four. I have no idea if in the first map actually a blue player is actually of, of relevant because we don't have, it's, it's the mission and there shouldn't be a blue player. So let's just stick to the red player for now. Um, what we need to do here is we go to the placement, then we do the four key in placement. And if placement.key equals equals red, then we have the red placement. Then we are here on this array. So what would we need to do then? We, we just pass over the key in the placement. So we have the red and the blue. Um, we go into the placement and if the placement is red, then we have to do another four each, which is actually the uh, X position. We can see it here. So it's the cell X in placement red. And the cell, let me just check this one. No, it's not, the, it's, it's okay. It's a, just the placement key. Then we just have the, uh, let us see the cell is then the placement red. placement key dot x placement key placement key dot epsilon so what we are doing here is we go over the placements and we're now fetching the cell now we have the cell and we know the cell is a placement cell. What I would like to do now, so we write some prototyping or some pseudo code, is we need to mark these cells as actually placement cells. As we could see in the original version, we have the Boolean which is placeable and we need to set it. So what we do for that is we go over here and we say we need a grid, some kind of grid, and the grid needs the function where we can say grid uh, set cell placeable, and then we give it the cell. So this function is not existing. Um, I will just uh, stop it for here. I forgot to add this one. So what we need to do now, um, 
placement and uh, placement yeah because it's not written wrong way so let us see so now he is uh, saying of course that uh, our function set cell placeable is not available because we don't have a function for now what we need for that is a grid which is storing actually our cells so what i would like to have is i would like to go to the map let us save this one we are in the map and i would like to add a new component which is the 2d node and i would like to call it grid data and then i would like to do a branch as seen and uh, the scene is grid data Then I would like to go to the scene just to have it a little bit uh, more extracted. In the grid scene now, we add a new script, which is the grid data. We put this to scripts and it's the grid data. Scripts tile map and we create it. And that's the note to do with the function and this. So what I would like to do is class grid data or better set grid <clears throat> so we name it as a class and then we can go back to the map and then we say on ready var grid is grid data get node grid Data. Go to the map, then he is actually giving us some hints. So, could not find type grid data in the current scope. Yes, it's right because we just named it grid. Could not find grid in the current scope. Mm, that's a little bit weird because I saw it with the class we just could do this. I need to check something up. Um, go dot four use class as type hint. Uh, we have class now. Ah, it's class name. I'm sorry. Yeah, the problem is always the go dot is a little bit weird sometimes how the classes are called so what i wanted to achieve is that it's actually class name grid and then he would say grid he now knows that grid is our class and on ready we then have our grid which is the get node grid so now we have a grid and now we need to set placeable cell placeable that's actually what we would like to do here func set placeable and this is a cell which is a vector 2 and we now write just pass what i would like to do now is we already started it with uh, the last thing i would like to do test driven development here um, because that's actually some um, some cool stuff we now have which is pretty much storing our data and this is very very good to test because we have now mathematics we can just test with and uh, so i would like to go to test driven development so we need to think about what we would like to do here or what what our grid actually should look like and how we actually access it what we would actually like to do is we need to add a cell to the grid and afterwards we need to make the cell placeable so what i would like to start off is just writing a test test 
at cell. This is our first test. To get this one working, we need to do the same as we have done before in the other test, but instead of the map, I would like to load the grid. And therefore we need to load the grid TCN. And then we have our grid. What I would like to do now on the grid is, so let me do some test driven actually. So when we need to add a test for a cell, we would like to call grid add cell. And then we just give it a cell here. So cell is not defined. For that we think cell is a new vector 2, which is maybe 0.0, .0 our first cell. And afterwards we add the first cell. If we now go to gut and we run our test, of course it will fail because the add cell is not a function of that. So what we need to do there is we need to add a function. And now we are already in the process of the test driven development. Because we have a, an error and we need to fix it now. So what we need to do is we need to write a function. And we have now added a function. We rerun our tests. And as you can see, we still say that the add cell in the packet scene is not available. And this is because we haven't instantiated this scene. So what we need to do is, of course, we need to add a var grid. Oh, we better say this one is the, the, grid, the grid scene. So, and now we need a var grid. And therefore we need to add green scene and instantiate it. I think so. Let us check if this is right. Yeah, this is right. So uh, now we can actually process our test. What he is now doing is he says test at cell did not assert. And this is risky because we now have a test which is not expecting any asserts. And that's uh, actually yeah, not very helpful because we actually want to test something. So for that to achieve, we actually need some more functions because what we want to do in the end is we want to do an asset equal and I always have to check if the expected is first or the got is first the got is first expected is the second so I expect true cell get is placeable so my assertion is I would like to have a cell or I better say to not uh, bring it our grid cell should be placeable. I need to take a short break. I'm back in a minute.
Captain. So here we are back to our test driven approach. So what I like about this test driven approach is it's, it forced us to think about how we would like to uh, use the class we are writing actually. And now we need already to think about how we would like to interact with it. And it also gives us the possibility to take very small steps. And I already did here some misstep because I already go for the placeable, but we are in a function where we would like to just add a cell and just test it. So this one is wrong. And also I would like to be a little bit more clear about the naming because we are not having a cell here. We have a cell coordinate. That's also quite important to understand with what objects and variables we are working here. So what we would try to do is we add a cell here and we of course want to see if grid get cell cell cord is giving us a cell back. So if it actually has added a cell. So there are now different ways. As I said, we now need to uh, think about how we would like to interact it. So maybe I would also say has cell and then we go cell cord. And of course we would, oh man, has cell, cell cord. And I was would expect a true here. So we have written this, we run our test. Of course, the test is now again failing because we don't have the function has cell. So we go into our function and then we say has cell. Um, we get a cell cord. We get a cell cord. And this is also a cell cord. Always the cell cord, which is a vector 2 pass. We have written this function. We rerun our test and the test is failing because it's expected we get null, but we expect true. So what we have done now is we have just uh, empty functions. And of course, the result is null. So what we need to do now is we need to add this function. So if we have cell, we want to add a cell. This also needs us to think about the data logic or the data layer we would like to have here because we need to have some kind of array or dictionary we can now think about what we would like to have um, in my case we have some old code here we can look how i have done it there and there all the time that i had a grid and all the cells where a tree map. So what I have done in the original version was I created a tree map with the epsilon cell as a key and the X as a key. And then we had an inner hash map. I'm not sure why I have uh, used the hash map on uh, Java on the original version. In Godot, I would stick to an array because it's easier. And I would like to just have an array with all our cells, makes it a little bit yeah, we have two paths actually we could now go but since the cell should have our data layer information i wouldn't like to have it as a dictionary where we can actually use it with the uh, with the keys as index so the problem is a little bit if we now have the cells as an array.
let us go back to the array of our array we can just have an array an array there's a da, 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 da. print array all append see how we actually working with the array code at four create empty array i think we can just do it in an empty way but let us just it's not good documented here i think we can just do it like that and then if we add the cell coordinate we would have to add a cell object which is actually our uh, tile and these tiles i would like to add into the cells so what we do here is what do we do here i don't know cells append and then of course we need the new object we would add here but as you can see we are already stucking now in the process because i have added a cell with the cell coordinate but i don't want, would like to have the cell coordinate instead i would like to have the tile here which we can actually class name tile and then i would like to have a tile and this is from type tile and in the cell we append our tile this is what i actually would like to have as the add cell because then we add it to the array so for this we need in our we don't need a cell coordinate we need tile and the tile is sorry the tile is then a far tile load res scenes tile then we say tile instantiate we also need as i said we need to name the uh, variables in a right way to not just get confused because if you don't name it right you often will just get confused by your names and that's not not good so we have a tile scene and we have a grid cell and now we add the tile here and then we would also give the grid no the grid we would get at court but therefore we need to add a tile also to the court so what we need to do now we need a chord as before we need a cell chord and this is vector 2 with 0 and 0 and then we question if the tie grid has the chord so we run it and it's still null and expect it true as hair cell so if we go back to our grid we add the sale and we add the append what we now need to do in the hair sale is we need to for cell in cells or better said for tile is working So what we need, uh, what we need now is to find the right tile for this coordinate. So what we say here is if tile, then we need to look in our tile cell X and cell Y. So if cell X equals equals cell chord X and tile cell epsilon equals equals cell chord epsilon 
then we would return true. Otherwise, in the meantime, we return false here. So what this means is, or what we are doing here, is we iterate over our array which contains of the tiles. And if the cell chord is matching the given cell chord, we return true because then it is a tile and otherwise we get false. So if we rerun our tests now, we get a past. So this one is passing the test, but I wouldn't expect it to pass because what we have done now is we have done zero zero and the tile has zero zero. It's just, I would say, the default value and that's why our test is actually working. But I would make the test a little bit more different. <laughs> and then let's say the cell code is one and zero. And if we rerun the test now, it should fail because now it uh, returns us false and it should returns us true because why it's returning false? Because this tile we added is now set with the cell coordinate 0.0, .0 as default. And we would like to have the 1 and 0 cell code. So what we need now is we need a function into the tile where we can actually set the cell code. So we name it just set cell code and we say cell code. <clears throat> and therefore we need a function which is called set cell cord ah, sorry and we get a cell cord which is a vector 2 and we say cell x is cell cord x and cell epsilon is cell cord epsilon now we save it and we rerun our tests and the tests are all passing and all everything is green. And by when we are matching, or when we are getting to this stage of test-driven development that our tests are matching and finished, we have the possibility to refactor our code. This also includes the uh, test code and our, our written code. So what I would like to do is I just move around a little bit. The cool thing now about the test-driven approach is we can now add, uh, edit our code. We can move it around. We can change other stuff. And we can always rerun our tests. And we know we are on a green stage. That is why there is this green bubble right here. And it shows us that at the moment everything is fine. When we now edit anything and we, and we broke it, this will go to the red stage and then we know we refactored something to broke it and that's the cool part about test driven because we are now on the green stage and now we can say everything we have added so far is working and now we could refactor code and change it in different ways so for example, what I dislike at the moment or what I would like to refactor is on the tile itself, I have added a var cell X and a cell Y. What I would like to have is instead, I would like to have a cell chord, which is also a vector two, because we don't need it to save as integers. We can save it as a vector two. And therefore we can just set the cell chord is cell chord. And then we refactored it a little bit. So and if we now run it, we can see that this is now not working anymore because we have changed it. So what we do is we're taking now the cell cord and say it's equal to cell cord instead. And then we can rerun the test. And now it's again failing. So what this means is we can't just compare vector two with another one with the equal signs. 
So we need to go to the vector two and we need to say or I need to look up go dot four compare to vectors. Come on. Why isn't it in here? Uh, compare the, the direction, sign two, singer two. Uh, not that what I would like. Man, I don't find the right word. Go dot four compare a vector comparison operator. I would have guessed that we can see it in there. operator equals equals Gib true zurück, wenn die Vektoren genau gleich sind. Aufgrund von Fließkomma sollten sie stattdessen die zuverlässiger sind. So normally the comparison should work. So let us check why it isn't working for us. We set a breakpoint here. And sorry, I just wanted to run the tests. And now we are in the breakpoint, and we can see the cell coordinate is one and zero, and the tile object has the cell coordinate zero and zero. Okay, so here is the problem that it wasn't added. So it was isn't called the comparison. It is the wrong set. But our test already saw that, said that. So that's right. But why is this not working? Because we have a problem here. I think uh, what we need to do is uh, something like that. Or was it because I had a And damn it. No, this is failing. Okay. So that's the problem that I actually had the same member variable name and the same we have given here. So what we need to add is we need to add a self cell chord to differentiate both of the variables from each other. So what we are setting here is, of course, our cell chord with the cell chord. So now our tests are working again. And now we are able to see. We have a grid where we can set a tile with the cell cord and the grid has the possibility to actually yeah the grid has the possibility to actually add a cell as a tile and we have the possibility to question the grid if the grid has a cell with the coordinate so that's cool let's go to the next test test is cell placeable so that's our next question uh, we can already copy the code from there because we always need the same and we can also add this already uh, we don't need the cell cord actually oh we need the cell cord sorry so we have the same test in general. So we need again a cell cord. We need to again a tile which is instantiated and we need again a grid which is instantiated. Afterwards, we set the cell cord for the tile and then we add the cell to the grid. And then I would equal as it equal 
if grid is cell placeable and then we again give the cell chord and we would expect that it's true. So then we would run the test again and then we are on the problem that we don't have this function because we need to create it. And therefore we say func is cell placeable and we again get a cell chord with a vector 2. We created the function, we go to gut, we create run gut again and we have the fail test because the null is expected to equal. So what we need to do now is we need to go back to our tests and we need to say tile set placeable true. So I would like to set in the tile that it, the tile is placeable. Therefore, we need a function which is set placeable, placeable, and it takes the placeable, it's a bool or boolean, I think it's bool in Golot, and then we would say self placeable equals placeable, and therefore we of course need a placeable which is a bool. Then we would run the tests again and it's still saying null expected to true because the grid has is cell placeable not set up. So what we have what we are now what we now need to do is another loop over that with the four tile in cells and then we would say if tile and now you see I will show you the magic of test driven development in a minute. So what I would do now is I would say if cell chord equals equals to cell chord then I would say return tile dot is placeable. Otherwise if you don't find it I would return false. False. So this uh, means we need a function here, which is func is placeable. Placeable. Return placeable. You can also say bool for that. We already know that. So then we run the test, and the test is saying could not pass global class tile from tile map. Because I'm not running gut, sorry. Come on. What I've done now. Could not pass global class tile from tile GD. Why is this so? It wasn't before. Grid data on 40. At cell. I'm a little bit confused about the error at the moment. <laughs> I'm really confused because why can he not parse it anymore? Because we have a problem in the function unexpected intent in class body. I see it, but I don't see it right. Huh? What is wrong here? Punk is placeable. It's not returning it right. Placeable. Build in terms of unexpected intent. Something is wrong with my funk. I don't know why I couldn't say to boolean, but okay. I'm a little bit confused about GD script in, <laughs> in this particular uh, case. What's the problem? But we are again on the testing and every test is running fine. So we are finished with this test. So this is already working. 
We could now, of course, take another cell chord. We could say another cell chord um, is vector 5.0, let's say. Vector 2, of course. And then we can write another as at equal, which is actually is cell placeable. And then we say another cell chord, and then we would expect false. And so we can, of course, double check if this is also running but as you can see this is also running so we are getting false back if this cell is not existing or not placeable and uh, we get true if this cell is placeable on 0 0.1 one <laughs> but it shouldn't be the case i see at the moment because i would expect this one to be failing because we don't set the tile coordinate no we set the tile coordinate i'm sorry we set the tile coordinate so the coordinate is the cell coordinate and then we set it placeable that's right so what i would like to do is I would add another tile, which is tile scene instantiate. And then we have here another tile where we say set cell cord to another cell cord. And then we set, we don't set the, the placeable. And then I would expect it to be false. And that's uh, the case. So it's false. So now I would like to show you the, the biggest advantage of the test-driven approach we have done so far. We have now for our grid three assets which actually um, testing our grid if the functions are returning what we expect them to return. And because we are now on the green stage, we have now the possibility in our grid to refactor some code. And this is needed this step in test driven development i can't stress this out too much this step of refactoring is the most important part of test driven development and coding in general what we would like to do now at this moment is we have green tests we know our grid is working as expected and now we would like to make our code better and we can it we can make the code better now because we are backed up with our tests. If we are now going to improve our code, we can then afterwards just run the tests again and see if everything is working as it was before. And this gives us this huge advantage that we just can edit our code and make it more readable, make it better looking, make it uh, more efficient whatsoever. And we have always the backup of our tests. And we know we haven't changed anything in the logic behind it when the tests are still true. So let us take this one, this function, because now it, it, it screams to be refactored. Why does it screaming? Because we have the for loop in the is place uh, is this cell placeable and we have the for loop in the has cell placeable and this one these both functions just show us that we need to do something and what i would like to do is to introduce another function which is func get cell by cell coordinate. Therefore, it's more or less the same as the has cell function instead of not returning true, instead it returns the tile or it returns null. And therefore, we now can say we don't need in the has cell this loop anymore we can just say get cell by cell coordinate and return equals equals 
not equals null. And so this function is just a one line because we say we try to get the cell and we get a tile or we get null. And if the result is not equals null, it has a cell. And the good thing now about this get function is we can also use it for the placement cell. We can say is cell placement. We can say get cell cell coordinate dot placeable no is placeable equals equals true and therefore we also oh no we don't need we don't need the equal we can just return it's placeable so the problem we have right here is if we don't have the cell so we just refactored the code we can rerun the test and we can see we have now the problem that the function is placeable is not working on nil so what we need to do is we say we need to say for cell is get cell cell chord and then we need to say if cell is not equals null, we return cell is placeable. No, it's placeable. Otherwise, we return false. So this is how it should work. Yeah, and now our tests again are back on the green stage. What I like, uh, dislike now is this function. Because what we're doing here is we're taking our cell out of the get cell. And if we are getting null, we, we need to do this one. And this is, yeah, I, I dislike it a little bit. But I'm not really sure if we can write it in go dot uh, go dot for check nil tenary Yeah, so what we, yeah, it's, it's in the go dot. So what we need to do is if cell return cell displacement. So that's actually the same logic behind it, but I think we can't make it, unfortunately, reducing to fewer lines than these four. I think these four lines are actually needed because we need to make sure that we actually have a cell. The other way around, we could do has cell and then get cell but then we would run the for loop two times instead of that i would highly 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 uh not recommending that we could work with exception states in gd script we could work with errors i think i think they have voted force row error Did, did I don't know if we have something like that. 
in Godot? I don't think so. That we can actually work with errors. Morning system, that's uh, something else. This print. No unused, can't reach. Catching errors in GD script. I'll print. No, there isn't try catch. Instead, it uses return values. Often failures expressed with null. The error. Yeah, so I think for Godot, or better said for GD script, uh, this is the best approach we can do. It's fine. It's it's a little bit. I think it's a little bit uh, complicated uh, in the stuff because we have four lines for it. But I think it's it's fine for for now. So what we have done so far, we have now added a grid with a grid class name, which can stores our cells, which stores our cells, and these cells can be added, can be get. We can change check if we has the cell, and if it's placeable. So, yeah, maybe the, the question is now a little bit if you would like to improve your performance stuff or if you would like to improve the readability. Because I could imagine it would be much cooler to say if has cell, cell cord, then get cell cell cord is placeable. Let's rerun the test. Everything is working as expected. So this is then three lines instead of four lines, but we have one for each call. We have one more for each call, which is actually doing this loop two times because the has cell will go through it and would say, oh yeah, we has it. And instead of returning us the tile, we already have in first place, we just checking and getting a boolean there. And afterwards we would do the same thing again to get the cell and it's placeable. So this is personal preference, um, how you would like to handle it. In my case, I would stick to this approach because then we have just one loop over the get cell. And if we get a cell, we, we replace, return the is placement stuff. So, but uh, nevertheless, let us go back to the map. We were in the map. We were setting the cell X and the cell Epsilon. So what we would like to achieve for today is at least to set the data for the placement. And therefore we created the parse placement data. And now we are able in the parse placement data to get out the cell and set the play cell placeable. So what we need to do now again is to have the function which says set cell placeable. Let's go back to the grid and we say function set cell placeable. And there we get a placeable Boolean. And therefore we need to get our cell. So we again, we have the cell get cell. And if cell, we say cell set placeable, placeable. Yeah, and of course, we need also to set the cell cord for vector two, placeable and the cell cord. <clears throat> in the grid because we first need to get this cell cord of course and then we need to get the set placeable on the map so we have the cell and we set no we don't need the, the boolean actually because we just know that we want to set placeable true and in the cell we have the set placeable which is then true we could also do a refactoring here and say we could just set placeable is always true because otherwise we would, won't need to set it actually. 
and therefore we just uh, need this so let us see if the codes uh, if the tests are still running we need to refactor them because we removed the parameter and now the tests are still working so i have to write another test but i have to take a short break again so i'm uh, back in a minute please stay tuned we will do some more testing in a minute So I'm back, I'm back. So let us uh, sum it up for the end of the stream. We are already you know, 10 minutes left. So let us uh, get back and let us get that working. So our tests are running fine and they are all finished. Um, we have set the place, set cell placeable. I would also like to test it because what I've done here is I have set the tile placeable what we would like to do instead is we would like to do it over the grid we would say grid set cell placeable and then we say the cell cord and then we rerun the test and then we say it's wrong uh call set yeah that's right because we have removed the param and then we have all our tests finished and it's working so what we have done now is we have just set the cell placement and yeah actually we have uh, created this function what we are doing here is let's sum it up at the end of the stream um <clears throat> we have uh, parsed our placement data out of the json which actually is uh, for key in placement it has the player red and the player blue the player blue we actually don't need at the moment we just need the red player so if we are in the red player we take for placement keys in placement key red and there we get the coordinates for all different placements and what we are doing there is we are setting the place uh, the cells now as placeable what this is doing 
we can't actually see it. Yeah, actually, we need to refactor our code now because the code has been changed because we have now in tile the set cell coordinate and we need to say here tile set cell cord it's a vector to with cell x and cell epsilon instead of setting these directly so we rerun the map and we get the error because cell epsilon is not defined because it needs to be uppercase then we are going here and then he is saying invalid operands array and string in operator equal equal. Therefore, we need to understand that this is wrong what I have done here. Because what we want to check is if the key is red. And if the key is red, we then do the placement keys. So then we getting another error. This is so cool to working with this error approaches. Um, invalid get index x epsilon on base array. So what I have done wrong here is that the red. No, what have I done wrong here? The placement key is the dictionary. Ah, okay. So what we get here is the placement cell already. And therefore, we just need, it makes the code easier because it's just the placement cell. And here it's also the placement cell. Let's rerun the code. Um, invalid call non existent vector2 constructor. So what what's this meaning? Because it's I have an idea because placement cell is a dictionary with x and epsilon which are strings actually. So let us test it in this way. So I think they need to be written like that. But this is also, this is wrong. No, I forgot the bracket. So let us rerun it. Non-existent vector still. Let me just say var x is uh, placement cell x. Yeah, we have a problem with the data types here. This is not something new because the problem is always how the JSON is processed. And uh, the X should be a 1. But maybe it is not. So what we need to do is... I would like to parse it as int. And then it's working. Yeah, I think it's a string maybe again. And then if you have a string, this is a problem because you can't create a vector two out of two strings. Instead, we need to parse it to an int file, uh, to an int there. And therefore we can create a vector two out of the int cells. So the code is working again. The problem is we can't see anything now because what we have done today is just we have just added the data layer to the tile map. So the tile itself now knows, I think these are these three tiles which are placeable now. And these tiles know that they are placeable, but we can see it at the moment because we have no visualization for it for now. But unfortunately the time for today is already gone, so we can't do it and we need to do it tomorrow. But we have uh, done the data layer for it and that's uh, the already half of the rent. Um, we will get the highlight for tomorrow working. So let us just uh, go back to our project planning tool. We need uh, this layer to actually do the math later. Um, add cell cord 
add accessible add placeable pixel cord we don't need as we have it the tie view we also have it yeah I, I would just bring it for now to this and we have already the cell code and the placeable cord the accessibility we need to look at at tomorrow so let us go back for today we had had we had had the twitch and we started with the implementation of placements so i would like to uh, do the copy as usual at the end of the stream and prepare the stream for tomorrow so we have already a no sorry now i have to see how it was working ah no it was this and then i could say twitch day seven save car to deck start journey yeah this is how it's working so then we go back into this and then we have day seven and then we have for tomorrow day seven at at placement highlights at placement highlights to the tile map afterwards starting with map objects and web objects i would like to do later because they are uh, bundled to the mission objectives and i think we don't want to do that for now i'm not really sure maybe we can start start with units tomorrow or start with a single unit to actually start with a single unit to make placement happen i would just describe it in this way and therefore we need to create highlight for placement and display it this also includes some animations so for tomorrow we will have the the highlight there then and this also will have some uh, animations and afterwards start with a single unit for placement yeah i think i would like it to have it like this so let us uh, again check day six um, I need to do some download and cut the video. I need to upload it and to post it. That's my work I have to do afterwards. But with the Twitch day six, we are actually finished for now. So we are good to go. And I also can turn this one into a... Oh, it's not okay. Okay, I'm fine so far. So I hope you had some fun today with me with the test driven development for the grid data layer. It was a little bit, yeah, was a little bit uh, tenacious, was a little bit slow the progress today, I would say, but this is the groundwork we are actually still in and we are still doing and it needs to be done in this way. Um, tomorrow we will get some more stuff ongoing into this grid then we are again working as we said um, with the highlight for the placement and also cover some animations so i think it would be cool maybe we also get started with the single unit um, as we have discussed today i will also start with again some uh, project planning at the start of the video tomorrow so we have a plan for it and yeah hopefully we'll be done then we make then a little bit of more progression through the game and we get something to play actually with at the moment it's a lot of stuff we just need to code and we just need to write the data layers and stuff like that for it um 
I hope end of the week two, and maybe we can plan this tomorrow. Um, we will have something we can also check already out, or we can at least play the game with some movement, animation stuff. We will see how this is going. Um, thank you for joining in today, and I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye bye.